Many of us have some very fond memories of the Super Nintendo, whether it's something that you had in your childhood or something that you're just getting into today. Maybe it's a game that you want to play that you never got a chance to try, or something that you traded in or sold years ago and you're trying to reacquire and play it again. Well, thankfully, there's a lot of ways to do that today. We have PC emulation. We have hardware emulation like the Mr. FPGA. And then, of course, we have genuine hardware. And sure, you can use an EverDrive, um, but there are others who prefer to use the original cartridge and play uh, the original cartridge on genuine hardware. And all of these are okay. It really comes down to what you're looking for. And collecting can be a lot of fun, but there are limits where it just stops making sense. So let's take a look and see what Earthbound is going for today. Oh. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Are you kidding me? $3,000 for a single game? You know what's better than spending $3,000 on a copy of Earthbound? I'll tell you what. Spending $60 on a copy of Earthbound. That's right. Mother 2 for the Super Famicom, uh, known as Earthbound in North America, complete for around $60 shipped to your door. Let's take a look inside. So we get a nice copy of the manual in pretty good shape here. We have a insert instructing us how to play the game. Not super helpful to me because I don't read Japanese. And then the game itself with the original factory plastic. Pretty cool. Nice. So why is this only $60 and Earthbound is $3,000? Well, the main reason why is because this is an RPG, which is very dialogue heavy and story heavy, and it's in Japanese. So if you can't read Japanese, which I'm assuming many of uh, you watching this video can't, this isn't much good to you. Uh, if it's an action game or a shooting game, yeah, not a big deal. Maybe the title screen is in Japanese, maybe the character selection, difficulty selection, you can get over that. But when the main purpose of the game is the dialogue and the story, that's really hard to justify. But thankfully, there is a solution. And that is the Super Stacker uh, from Voltar. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on that. And this little guy, what that's going to do is that's going to use flash memory to replace the mask ROM with a patched copy of this game. And we're going to be able to play this game in English on our genuine Super Famicom or Super Nintendo with a cartridge adapter. So let's go ahead and get started. I would like to mention that Voltar already has an excellent video on the subject of installing the 8 megabits and the Super Stacker. He goes into depth um, every step of the way on using these devices. Uh, this video is not meant to replace that, but rather be a supplement specific to the application of localizing our copy of Mother 2. Um, now, in most cases, you're going to need to do a ROM dump, and uh, I will use my open source cartridge reader for that purpose. Now, in this case, we're actually going to be using a ROM of Earthbound and patching that, um, which I'm going to be doing off camera. But I'm going to show you how to uh, dump the ROM uh, using the open source cartridge reader. Of course, there are many different types of hardware that can do this, but I like this because it allows us to take uh, Genesis, NES, N64, even Game Boy, um, and some others through adapters. But we're going to be using the Super Nintendo space here. So let's go ahead and install Mother 2. Make sure our SD card is firmly seated. Make sure we're set to 5 volts, and then go ahead and power her up. All right, very good. So what we need to do is we need to choose Super Nintendo. Once again, we need to choose Super Nintendo. Now it's going to scan and search the database, and once it successfully finds the game, it'll display the title. And there we go, Mother 2, that's what we want, so let's continue on. Now you'll see there's many options here. Uh, not only can we read ROMs, but we can also read and write the SRAM, uh, the saves, and, which is great for preservation purposes, especially if you are replacing batteries in these cartridges. You can uh, save the, uh, the SRAM replace the battery, and then restore the SRAM. But we're not going to do that today, so we're just going to read the ROM. 
Now this will take a few moments as it reads the ROM, writes it to the SD card, and then verifies the checksum. So you need to be a little patient while this process completes. And there we go, mission accomplished. We can go ahead and shut this off, remove the SD card, and pop it into our computer. In the interest of time, I went ahead and completed a few steps in advance, including uh, copying our Mother 2 ROM off of the SD card to the desktop, uh, our Earthbound ROM as well, which we're going to need to patch, and finally downloaded our Mother 2 patch file. Um, this is the perfect edition. I got this from romhacking.net. You can get this from a variety of different sources. And I'm using version 1.5, which is the latest at the moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our earthbound ROM file and we're going to drag and drop that into the ROM patcher JS, which is a web-based ROM patcher, and then take our patch file and drag that in as well. We want to make sure that our temporary header is unchecked and we want to make sure we have the green checkbox here because that tells us that this is a match. So we can go ahead and apply that patch. It will download the file, earthbound patched, which is great and then we drag and drop that into BSNES to make sure that it's working properly. And perfect, it boots. So we are good to go to the next step. You may notice that our patched ROM is four megabytes, which is uh, 32 megabits. So that's not going to fit on these flash memory modules. So what we need to do is use SNES ROM utility, load in that patched ROM, Choose split file and choose two megabytes, which is of course 16 megabits, and hit OK. It's going to generate two files for us, patched one and two. So if we check those, see we have two megabytes and two megabytes. Perfect. I'm using the exact same programmer as Voltar to program the flash memory. This is called the Flashcat USB. You can learn more about this product over on his channel. Uh, what we're going to do is we are going to match up the indicators. The dot up here has to match this. And we are going to push this down, drop in the flash memory, make sure it's centered, and release. It'll spring back up on its own. And we can go ahead and plug this into our computer. If this is your first time using FlashCat, you do need to install these drivers. So make sure you open up Device Manager and get these all squared away. And then once set, you can open up the FlashCat executable. Before plugging in the hardware, let's just double check and make sure that we are using the X8 programmer and that our voltage dip switch is set to five volts. And then go ahead and plug that in. You're going to see it connect and you're going to see the memory module displayed. If you don't see that, go to mode and make sure that parallel NOR flash is selected. From here, we're going to use the parallel NOR tab and we are going to hit write data to memory. We're going to choose our first earthbound file. We're going to hit open and we're going to hit OK. This will take some time to complete. Now that that's complete, what we are going to do next is confirm that everything is proper. We are going to hit compare memory contents. We are going to once again choose the exact same file as before, hit open, and then hit OK. Perfect. We have a mismatch count of zero bytes, which is a 100% match. That's what we want to see. Don't skip this step. It's really important that you verify the contents. So what we're going to do is repeat the exact same process for the second file. Uh, make sure we don't get the two mixed up, and then we can move on to the installation. Let's go ahead and open up our cartridge. We're going to zip out this battery.
and we're going to install our brand new battery into the existing slots. Next, we have to isolate the OE pin, which is right here and right here respectively. Now you can use a desoldering station and pull them out, but what I've found is that um, it's very difficult to actually reinsert them without breaking it once you pull it out. So you're actually better off clipping it with a pair of flush cuts like these. So let's go ahead and give that a clip and same up here. We're going to bend these up like this. And we're going to take our soldering iron and we're going to bridge that to VCC to tie it high. All right, so let's go ahead and install our RAM on the Super Stacker. Uh, so first thing that we're going to want to do is make sure that the mark for pin one is lined up and go ahead and place our flash memory uh, onto the Super Stacker. Uh, you want to make sure those pins are aligned. And what we're going to do is we are going to tack uh, one pin, doesn't really matter which, um, but to do that, we're just going to need a real small amount of solder not much, eh, that might even be too much, but that's okay. We'll put some no clean flux on here. Make sure our pins are aligned and go ahead and get that first solder joint done. Perfect. Okay, now I'm going to spin it around and I'm going to do the exact same thing uh, on the opposite corner. I didn't realize I wasn't recording during that first pass, but I'll go ahead and show you what the second pass looks like here. It's the exact same technique. So what we're gonna do is apply some no clean flux. We just want a very small amount of solder here. There we go. And uh, what we're going to do is we are going to apply that solder and we are going to use a drag technique to apply it down these pins. I may need to apply some additional no clean flux. Our final step in preparation of the board is to set these jumpers. Now, because we're not actually using this in stacking mode, our COE is going to be left open, ROM is going to be set to one, and then this guy is going to be set to SG. So let's go ahead and do that. To install our first super stacker, we're going to locate U1 and we're going to flip the cartridge over to the other side. 
The super stacker will mount right on the back of the pins, just like this. It may need a tiny bit of convincing, but it should go in fairly snug and line up with those pins, just like that. Now we're going to grab our soldering iron and go ahead and complete the installation. our work, make sure that we have no shorts, and every solder joint is nice and shiny. That's looking good to me. Now we can move up and complete the second one. Very good. At this point we can inspect our work to make sure all the solder joints look good, give it a nice thorough cleaning, and then one last thing I like to do before I button it up is take my, uh, my 99.9 .9 isopropyl and just use a little bit of this with a, a nice microfiber to clean off these contacts. All right, let's go ahead and reassemble. All right, time to test it out. But first, I need to remove my favorite game, the 240p test suite. What an excellent piece of software that is. And go ahead and pop in Mother 2. All right. Well, would you look at that? Mission accomplished. Nice work, everyone.